The 12 vial vortices were a concept put together by Ivan Sanderson back in the early 1970s. And he wrote a paper called The 12 Devil's Graveyards Around the World. And he did a lot of statistical research at the time. He was studying like the Bermuda Triangle and many other areas, including uh, the Dragon's Triangle, the Devil's Triangle off the coast of Japan. And he found very strange occurrences, anomalies, time dilations, plane disappearances, and many other strange things like this occurring at these specific spots around the planet. And when he mapped them out, he realized that one of them was a Bermuda Triangle, one of them was the Devil or the Dragon's Triangle of Japan. He also got the North and South Pole. But all the others seem to have strange occurrences happening as well. And when he put these all together, he realized it was the shape of an icosahedron, which is one of the five platonic solids. And this is basically um, a shape which has 20 equal triangular faces around a sphere. And so when you sort of put that in context, he was the first person really to put it out there that there might be a planetary grid at work. So when you're looking at the vial vortices, you find a lot of strange things happening. Uh, if you just look at the Bermuda Triangle, that is actually one of the points. It's one of the points on the actual kind of system that Ivan Sanderson came up with. And this area, as well as all the other areas, had an unusually large amount of gravitational anomalies, magnetic disturbances, plane crashes, uh, magnetic and electrical fluctuations and crafts that were moving through here. Also, there were problems with ships getting lost and sinking randomly, um, people were kind of going mad and things like this. So there's a lot going on at these particular spots around the world that are called the vile vortices. Within the Bermuda Triangle, we know that ships go missing, uh, aircraft too, um, and that there is extreme weather conditions as well. These include tornadoes that have a certain amount of luminosity connected with them. Luminosity that is plasma based. And they also seem to give out other types of anomalies of an electromagnetic nature, including X-rays. Um, and this has been registered, uh, flights over them have recorded these, um, these electromagnetic anomalies. The aircraft have quite literally encountered these time storms, you know, clouds with luminosity within them and flying through them and either losing or gaining time. Uh, and being and, and living to actually report the experience afterwards. Similar phenomena has been reported to take place in the other vile vortices as well, especially in the Devil's Sea or Dragon's Triangle off the coast of Japan, where we get many accounts of ships and aircraft mysteriously disappearing. In the early 70s, which was around the same time as Ivan Sanderson's uh, 12 vile vortices theory, a group of three Russian scientists came out with this idea and they produced a paper in this academic journal in Russia discussing whether the centre of the Earth was a large geometric crystal. Now this was peer reviewed, this was taken very seriously at the time. It was published, it became a sensation at the time. And they believed that over millions of years, Earth the earth had kind of formed around this natural giant crystal and actually the energies the kind of coming off the points of these crystals could still be detected on the surface of the planet even into modern times and they believe great ancient civilizations would have been placed at these particular points because they produced the most energy but also they found that even if you place the top point with the bottom point on the earth at the north and south pole that it produced they thought it was a dodecahedron and actually one edge of a dodecahedron actually marked the, the same positioning of the mid-atlantic ridge so they believed that they may be evidence of their theory still present on the surface of the earth there is a theory uh, that within the earth itself is a form of natural sacred geometry uh, that is formed out of something called the macabre and that the macabre itself is the term that's used for what's known as the stellated tetrahedron this is two tetrahedrons interlinked together uh, and the corners of this particular design come out at 19.5 degrees and these are considered to be points 
are vortexes or are portals uh, which have been marked on many cases by ancient monuments and this is work that people have discovered for themselves at different places all over the world. The idea that the, the macabre or the stellated tetrahedron uh, decides the geometry of a, a planet like the Earth is something that's not confined purely to the Earth itself. Uh, very similar patterns uh, featuring a latitude of 19.5 degrees which defines the corners of the Mechibar is something that's been uh, traced also on Mars for instance and also on Jupiter. Many of the Earth's major volcanoes are on the 19.5 degree latitude. Hurricanes are also often created in this region. Sunspots on the Sun are most prevalent at 19.5 degrees both north and south. Other things at this latitude include volcanoes on Venus, Olympus Mons on Mars, the largest volcano in the solar system, the Great Red Spot on Jupiter, and the Great Dark Spot on Neptune. The Earth grid is a combination of different concepts sort of encapsulated around the entire planet. It's really an extension of ley lines, um, Earth energies, even cymatics as well, and sacred geometry and spherical geometry and the platonic solid. So you can mix all these things together. But really to me, it's like a concept of different elements which are linked with the earth mysteries and going into the arena of geometry because when you start looking at the nature of energies around the world you realize that these vortex these points on the surface always seem to match where points of different platonic solids or archimedean solids would actually touch the surface if you expand it to this global scale so we have things like the icosahedron and the dodecahedron which are kind of interlocked they kind of they nest within each other but if you actually check where the points are on the surface if you base it along the north and south pole you see there are major ancient sites and anomalies and mountains and volcanoes at these specific spots so to me i think they there's an energy system everywhere, whether from the cell all the way up to the universal kind of picture. And so the Earth is included in there. Anything that's spherical and spinning like the Earth is or other planets is going to have some kind of energy and geometry associated with that.